Hi everybody. I wanted to make a quick video to talk about how we solved one of the problems on the exam. Uh, so the question was, if you're integrating from 0 to 3 pi over 2, the function sine cubed of x, how do we know that this is actually going to give us a positive value without going through the process of integrating using the fundamental theorem of calculus? So uh, we can make uh, an observation. Uh, forget about uh, sine cubed, and let's just think about sine for a second. So if we were to do a rough sketch of the sine function, then we know that it intersects the, ax, the x-axis at 0, pi, and 2 pi. So this would be our sine of x. Uh, I'm graphing sine of x, by the way, because I don't know what sine cubed of x looks like. Um, now, 3 pi over 2, that's sitting here in the middle. And so if I was just going to integrate, actually, this should hit at the minimum. Uh, if I was integrating there, then I'd say, OK, cool. I'm getting all this positive area, positive accumulation between 0 and pi. And then there's some negative stuff. And what I suspect, looking at the graph, is that there's a symmetry. That is, between 0 and pi, and then between pi and 2 pi, I get the same graph just flipped. Of course, I just suspect that. I have not proved that yet. Uh, so let's try to prove that. And well, what does that actually mean? So if I choose some point between 0 and pi, let's say this, this x value, then I know that the height is sine of x. OK, now it looks like the curve just flips over when I move over to between pi and 2 pi. So what that means is if I jump over to the corresponding point, right? what is that corresponding point? Well, it should be pi away, because here is 0 to pi, so this should be x plus pi. If I go to x plus pi, I should get the exact same height, only with a negative sign. So since sine, at x I get sine of x, at x plus pi, I would expect to get sine of x plus pi. But again, it, it, it should be the exact value, but with a negative. So this actually, I think, should be negative the sine of x. OK, well, I'd like to be able to prove that that, that formula is always true. So can we prove that sine of x plus pi is equal to negative the sine of x. Well, we have a couple ways we might do this. One, there's a, a nice formula for when you have the sine of a sum. So I could rewrite this as the sine of x times the cosine of pi plus the sine of pi times the cosine of x. Now, we know that the cosine of pi is negative 1, and the sine of pi is 0. And so this just simplifies to negative sine of x. Hey, that's what we wanted. Now, there's another way we could have argued this. Let's draw the unit circle. If I choose some point on the unit circle, this gives me some angle, say x, the coordinates of this point are going to be cosine of x comma sine of x. Now, in the formula, I'm supposed to look at x plus pi. Now, adding pi is like adding 180 degrees. So this just goes straight through to the other side. And so I'd get an angle here of x plus pi. And so again, I would know what the coordinates are. It's cosine of x plus pi and sine of x plus pi. All right, or just looking at the diagram, we can see that as I go straight through the origin, symmetrically across, I'm going to take the x value and just negate it. So this actually would just be the same thing as the negative of the cosine of x. And the same thing with the y value. So I'll get the negative of sine of x. And so again, the sine of x plus pi will equal the negative of sine of x. OK, so this verifies that when we go back up to our sine curve, that 
between 0 and pi, and then between pi and 2 pi, I'm getting the exact same curve, but just upside down, which means that I'm getting the same accumulation except upside down. So this is telling me, for instance, that when I integrate between, say, 0 and, well, let's go halfway, let's go to pi over 2, sine of x, that's actually the same thing as if I integrate between pi and 3 pi over 2 of sine of x, except I'm getting a negative. Right? Of course, I could pull that negative to the outside if I prefer. And so what that tells me is that this green area here and this green area here have the exact same value up to a sign. And so if I add them together, I'm going to get 0. And so then what would I be left with? I'd be left with this area between pi over 2 and pi, which appears to be positive. And again, going to the unit circle, if we looked between pi over 2 and pi, we'd say, yes, the sine value, which is the y value of all these coordinates, is always non-negative. So the curve really will be above the x-axis, and so I will get a positive value. So from here, I could argue that if I integrated from 0 to 3 pi over 2 sine of x dx, that this would be a positive value. OK, well, what happens with the problem we actually wanted, which had a sine cubed in it? Well, we actually can just go to this formula we proved, and we can cube both sides. So if I take sine of x plus pi and cube it, that will be the same thing as negative sine of x cubed. And so sine cubed of x plus pi is equal to, well, if you cube a negative, that's still a negative, and then you get negative sine cubed. So in fact, sine cubed will have the exact same property as sine. That is, if you graph it between 0 and pi, you're going to get the same graph between pi and 2 pi only flipped upside down. And so once again, we can conclude that if you integrate from 0 to pi over 2 and from pi to 3 pi over 2, you're going to get the exact same value, not with sine, but actually with sine cubed. And so the remaining pit uh, between uh, pi over 2 and pi for the graph of sine cubed, which again, because sine is positive on that interval, so will sine cubed, you're going to get some positive value. And so we're going to be able to conclude that between 0 and 3 pi over 2, sine cubed has positive accumulation.